Welcome back to the Audio Sauna. I'm Sinfully Luscious on air live with me. Yeah, guess who I have with me? I have Howitzer from Arizona. This band kicks total ass. Brand new album. Welcome to the Audio Sauna. Hello. Action Radio. You guys Hi. rock. I'm I'm so glad to have you guys on air with me today, and, um, you know, we were talking in the background about what you guys were doing, and you said you guys have been together so long that you do weird shit together, right? It's true. Oh, yeah. It, it gets a little weird sometimes, but you got to push the boundaries, I guess, a little bit. <laughs> it most, <laughs> most definitely. But you know what? We're here to talk about your new album. I've listened to it, and it is totally incredible. And rumor has it that you guys are going on tour in the spring and summer. Do you have, like, any details that you can share with me? When you're on tour, what drives your band? So answer those two questions for me. you want this quote? Yeah, I'll take it. Um, there's plans of a tour in the works right now. We can't speak of it too much. Um, but we're, we're definitely planning, hopefully, late summer to get out and... Uh, you know, go kick ass across the country. Uh, what drives us? The band. The band. <laughs> the band drives us. I think what drives me individually is uh, definitely, you know, uh, just getting new fans and uh, kind of marketing to a new crowd. You're going out, you know, no one knows who the hell you are, and you kind of got to just go out there and do what you got to do. And just the exposure aspect is what drives me and my peers. I think those. <laughs> Good answer. Now, with the new album, how did you guys put this all together? What is the special meaning behind the new album for you guys as a band? Well, um, you know, Moody's a a glorified genius. And one day he woke up and he just literally had this album. No, I'm just teasing. Um, I dreamed the whole album. We, <laughs> we just recorded it. When I yeah, we, he dreams it and we recorded it. This is what happened. Um, we uh, we pretty much prepare ourselves every couple of years to have like a, a year of fighting with each other. Uh, you know, bang, you know, <laughs> getting it, into it with each other over ideas and kind of, you know, how everything works. But how it kind of breaks down is, you know, each of us kind of bring our own, you know, music that we've been working on or structures or ideas or purpose to a song and that's kind of how the musical aspect comes together Cons- I mean, I guess concept wise of echoes we're just trying to you know write a listenable album that people can just put in and listen from front to back and with all the bs going on in the music industry we're kind of just wanted to take the more positive look of everything well, I love the album. I've listened to it from front to back, and I'm totally really into the music because it is so different, because you guys have three lead singers, not just one. Tell me about that concept. It's, it, uh, it was a struggle when we first started, but, uh, you know, it's, it's something definitely unique that comes to us, you know, uh, that we bring to the table. You know, each of us have our own kind of tones and you know, how we like to get the message across. And I, I also think we didn't want to deal with the bullshit a lead singer brings. <laughs> so we decided to just do it on our own. It's worked out pretty well. We are the strongest tripod ever created. I like that. So is that what makes you different from all the other bands that are out there today? Or is there something that Howitzer has that no one else does? Um, I think, you know, when it comes to, you know, comparing, you know, when when you get that question in interviews, you know, is this what makes you different from all other bands? You know, I think making music, creating music is an art. So comparing art to art does, I mean, everybody has their own, you know, taste. But what makes us different is just the personalities in this band, the, you know, the vocals, the, the, the drive, the groove, and just remaining independent that we just continue to push, push, push forward, you know? I want to touch on that a little bit. I want to touch you, too. Um, (laughs) I think that we emphasize groove. Um, I think, you know, I like a lot of the technical stuff that's coming out, but 
you know, we're writing music for the love of it, and I think when it comes down to when people want to get into the groove, and that's that's hard to find. And, uh, you know, I think we've just been kind of getting tighter with that aspect and, you know, kind of developing into our own sound. I think that's something that was bigger back in the, you know, the 70s and the 80s, and it's kind of gotten lost in the last few years, so we're trying to bring that, that back to the music. I like that answer. Well, you know what we're going to do right now? We're going to go ahead and play another one of your tracks. This next one coming up is called The Vision. What is this song about? Um, when I originally wrote this song, I was super pissed off, um, which usually most of my lyrics come out of. But it's usually, it ends up being a really huge positive message and light message for, you know, whether it be for me or what people take from it. But, you know, it's, it really kind of breaks down to putting everybody else's opinions aside and following what you you believe in and what you want to come out of a situation, and that will be your vision. Well, let's hear it right now on Metal Nation Radio. Here's Howitzer and the vision. Yeah. And we're back live on MetalNationRadio.com. I'm Sinfully Luscious, and with me I have Howitzer. We've been talking about their brand new album, and also about what they as a band are, you know, really into. In fact, um, we were laughing about van stories as we were playing the last song, The Vision, and I was telling them about a band that I interviewed that got stuck in Cowfield, and they were saying, well, yeah, we have our, our number of van stories out on tour. So tell me about one of your van stories. Oh, no. Um, I think it usually starts out with Moody, Moody in the back cuddling with somebody. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> um, 
I needed not somebody to grab you his best head. Um, we were, uh, should I tell them about Odessa trip or no? The Odessa, which one was that? The one we got, the cop wanted to argue with me. We were leaving Odessa, we were just, uh, we were just touring with OTEP, and, uh, and we're leaving, you know, you got a picture of this van attached to, like, a, a 6x10, you know, trailer in the back, too, so it takes a little bit to get up to speed, and we basically come off the, st- the light, and, uh, you know, within, like, a few seconds, we get pulled over by a, you know, just a police officer. You know, he clearly notices we have out of state plates and all that stuff. And he's like, he comes up and he goes, "Did you know you were speeding?" Uh, and you know, we're all like, "No, no, we didn't know we were speeding." And you know, we ask him for the radar and stuff, and he basically tells us <laughs> that you have to come back for <laughs> come back for court in like a month. I'm like, Hey man, we're on tour. How, how am I supposed to get back here for court? And just uh, you know, me being me, I got continued <laughs> continue to get into it with with this police officer, and we'll leave it in at that <laughs> for a bit. <laughs> well, that sounds like a um, interesting tour story, definitely. Now, tell me a little bit about what you guys do to approach new material. Is there you know, do you guys just sit down and say, let's write a song, or what do you guys do to really yeah, get into, you know, what you're going to write? We're going to let the sloth take this one. <laughs> I feel like you should talk really slow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It just kind of comes when it comes. Um, it, it's just when that inspiration hits you at different times and, and from a whole lot of different places, uh, except for Jeremy, where it's always just anger. And wanting to destroy things, and then he writes a song that sounds awesome. But you know, for me, it can be listening to any kind of different music. I've, I've picked up um, riffs from like hearing cars passing, stuff like that. I know it sounds weird. And birds whistling, birds whistling, birds whistling. <laughs> the trains going down the track. The wind, Woody Woodpecker. Small, yeah. baby, a small a riff that was from Woody Woodpecker one time. I was inspired by the Woody Woodpecker song. Small baby's heartbeat. <laughs> So it, it, it's really anything. I mean, it's, for me, it has to be like more of a specific song that I could tell you more about where that one thing came from. But yeah, for, for me, when I'm writing stuff, it's from all over the place. So it's kind of like you have an overload of information, and then you just like sit down and 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 take care of it on on paper or whatever with a riff or or with lyrics. Yeah, I think more lyrically that that's how it works lyrically. They riff wise, that's more where you know I can hear something out in when I'm walking around or whatever or on TV or you know someone else's song or something like that and kind of hear an idea and then that turns into it would take it to the house or machine which I show it to the guys and then Jeremy always says, "Well, this isn't uh, this isn't good enough." <laughs> so they take it home and it's about two weeks later with the the you know, 20 times improved risk that we use that ends up on the record. Well, as, for as long as you guys have been together, which is nine years now, what keeps everything fresh for you guys? We, uh, we usually plan at least a quarterly cuddle session. Um, lots of Febreze. <laughs> a lot of Febreze. <laughs> you know, thank you, Febreze. Maybe wipes. <laughs> Febreze is your <laughs> the story to you. Um, you know, I think that keeps it fresh is, you know, we always are, we try to always stay on the same page about stuff and always keep it in the open and, you know, and, and writing new material and actually, you know, with all the, a lot of the music lately that's been released, there's a lot of, um, how do you say it? A lot of music's been stale, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, really working hard to get out there and finding, finding, your inspiration is always, I think, key to keeping things fresh. And on that note, you know, what are your thoughts about what has happened to the music business? Is it easier to for you guys to make music now, or was it easier in the past? And how do you feel um, about digital downloading as opposed to physical, tangible patch- packaging? I think we're like the first generation of people that kind of grew up with that, you know, uh, we never like thought that someone's going to come down and give us a multi-million dollar contract. It just it's not reality anymore. So we've always 
done everything ourselves and, and, and done it for ourselves and for the people that enjoy our music. So, um, you know, more power to, to being able to do it easier. It's definitely easier. You know, we, we put out our own CD and, you know, uh, we go to the studio here in Arizona and work with the guy here and then we send it off to a company and then, you know, we need to work with the designing on the artwork ourselves. Um, you know, and, and do all that stuff that in the past, like a bunch of other people would have done, like, like producing, we, we produce the stuff ourselves. Uh, we don't have anyone to help us with that because we do it ourselves. So we've done everything DIY the entire time we've been a band. So I guess we just don't even know anything else. Yeah. I think also, you know, when you, you know, ask, you know, what's the difference in making music? I think we've always made music the same way and we always kind of stand behind you know, I think as a band, it's like, you know, no matter how you get your music, get your music. Go out and get your music. Download it. Buy it. You know, we prefer that you don't steal it, but if that's how you're going to do it, and you you know, then, then do it. But you know what? Out of all that, make sure when that band comes to a city near you or a town near you or a church near you or a synagogue near you, you get out there and you see them play and you go support them live. You know, if that, if, you know, no matter what, no matter how you get your music, get out there and support the band. That's right. Occupy a venue, definitely. Now, is there anything that you guys want to say to your fans and let them know how to get in contact with you and where they can buy your music? You very much can get Howitzer music off of every single digital download site available, most uh, indie shops in your area. Um, you can get it through cdbaby.com, amazon.com, you know, come and visit us and, and join, yeah, yeah, and, and join, and join us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, everywhere, howitzerazcom um, find us on, yeah, find us on, uh, iTunes, we, uh, we also just got recently added to Pandora Radio, so if you're into that, be that, get there, and, uh, we just really want to thank, you know, radio stations like, you know, Metal Nation Radio and yourself for, you know, doing what you guys do and, you know, not asking for anything in return. It's just awesome of you guys. Well, this is what we do. You know, we we want to help bands like you get your music out there and, of course, be heard by the world. And that's why we do what we love, listen to you guys and other bands throughout the world. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you. Now, is there? there's one thing that I want you to do for me before I put on your last song. I want you guys to do a shout-out for me. We're Howitzer, and you're listening to Metal Nation Radio, United We Rock. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much for being on, and I'm going to get on out of here. You stay on the line with me on the back side. We're going to play Becoming the Antidote right here on MetalNationRadio.com.
have it. Howitzer from Arizona. All that is Howitzer. It is kick-ass. Go get the brand new album. It is called The Echoes of Prometheus. Go get it on Amazon.com, iTunes, CD Baby, wherever you can download digital music from. It is awesome. Loved having them on air. They were a great interview. Look forward to having them on air again when they can tell us more about uh, their quote, tour plans. Well, I'm Sinfully Luscious. This is the Audio Sauna. We're live on Metal Nation Radio. We're united. We rock. And if you have not come over to our site, please do. MetalNationRadio.com.